Okay, hello. I am Marcia Kendrick from Neverland Albums, <clears throat> and I am here to make the Farmhouse Living Recipe Album. <coughs> Excuse me. If you are here, then you have probably seen the album that I posted on Echo Park Paper Fans and Mini Albums, Mini Album Addicts. Um, that was a walkthrough of a version of this book, but it only has three pages. This one will have four. I went ahead and added, well, the original one was supposed to have four, but then whatever my brain came up with for page seven and eight, once I actually made it, did not work at all. So, <clears throat> did away with that and um, went ahead and made that book, but for this tutorial, I created a new page seven and eight, and even in the video for page eight, this went from just being a single pocket page to being a pocket page with an envelope accordion cutesy thingy for, you know the word, recipe cards. <clears throat> so this is my very first time making a tutorial. It's going to be a very bumpy ride I will make mistakes while we are doing this. Um, but the good thing is, is the copy of the layouts and plans that you can find with these videos, whatever I discovered I did wrong during the tutorial, I've already corrected on the form document that you have found. So you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> um, so if you are a person who likes to pre-cut like I do, then in the actual video for the first page, you will see how I usually do that, how I organize the pages so that I can keep them together and, and know where I'm at whenever it comes time to do that page. There will be one video per page. Um, and I believe video six is in two parts. Not because it's that big and crazy, but because the mailman came and I had to stop the video. Um, I do not know how to edit yet. So again, this is a lot like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <clears throat> so I'm doing all this with my phone. I got no clue how to edit. Sometimes my mouth says things that it probably shouldn't. So if you have sensitive ears, I'm sorry. Um... I try my best not to curse. Uh, but just a little background on me. I was an art teacher for a few years. I've been a special education para. Um, I now work in, in our main business office for our school district. So, yeah, that special education para thing, that kind of changes the way my brain thinks. But hopefully you are able to keep up. If not, you can always message me on Neverland Albums and I will do my best to help you understand what my jumbled up words are trying to say. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to start with the top here on my planning page. I have the size of our covers, which is going to be nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. Our page sizes are going to be nine, I'm sorry, eight and a half by eight and a half. Um, that's again down here. I do not have the first number for the spine because I'm going to put the hinges together and then I usually measure it to see exactly how wide that is and that's how I determine my spine. So we are going to do our hinges first, then we'll know what our width for our spine is going to be. All right, so I do my spines in two parts because I like to make for sure that I have two inches on either side of my spine that goes up onto the front cover and the back cover. I feel like it makes it more secure. It's just another way of strapping it down. <clears throat> so I usually combined some of the hinges to make one continuous hinge. You'll see what I'm saying in a minute. So we have our spine A, I'm sorry, hinge A and hinge B. The first one is going to be nine and a half by eight and one quarter. And then these are all of our score lines. I'm gonna walk you through that. 
This is hinge B and it is going to be six and three fourths by eight and one fourths. My hinges are, are an inch tall. And that is because I like to give it two score lines before I attach my page. It gives it a little bit more bend and it helps the pages lie flatter in your book. Um, so yeah, I tried, I tried the movable hinge um, the other day that somebody did and it worked great. Except when you closed your book and, and if you were going to put it up on a shelf like this, the hinges tend to make the pages fall a little bit outside of the cover. And I just kept thinking that they were falling out. So we're going to try it this way and see if this works better. So let me get out my paper. I am using craft paper for this. Um... It's just from Walmart. I think you get, I don't know, 25, 50 sheets of the 12 by 12 for $5. <clears throat> and then you can get the 8.5 by 11, I don't know, 75 sheets, something like that for $5. It's worked just perfectly fine for me from Walmart. You get it wherever you need to get it from. The only thing with the Walmart paper, it has this perforation at the top. And so I have to make sure that I'm not counting that as part of the page I'm going to use. So this will be the first side that I'm going to cut off. So we need... <clears throat> we are going to cut our first sheet at nine and a half. So that will be nine and a half wide by eight and one quarter tall. All right. So this will be hinge A. I always label my papers. <clears throat> and this is my nine, what did I say? Nine and a half wide, eight and a half tall. So this way when I go to put it on my scorebook, Score pay, uh, scoreboard or in my book, I know that this is the direction it should be in. It won't need to be in this one or else it would be written this way. So probably a little overboard on the organization, but again, that's, that's how my brain works. So this is where we are. Hinge B is going to be six and three fourths. by eight and one quarter. Okay. So this one needs to be six and three fourths across. So this is hinge B. Also, this is the last video I'm making because <laughs> I've already done all the pages. And then I thought, oh, I should show them how to do that. So if I'm not explaining something here, it will probably be explained in video for page one. <clears throat> All right, so I get out my school board. I do mine sideways. It's easier for me to go this way to score than this way. I don't know why. But I also use my paper cutter as if I was a left-handed person. Might be because my mother was left-handed. I still start out cooking left-handed and then I have to move the handle around to a normal position for a right-handed person. All right, so, oh, we want to start with A. So here's A. All right, so this is how our page will sit. We're nine and a half across, eight and a quarter down. <clears throat> so, according to our little plans here, our first score line is going to be at two. That's the part that's going to be attached to the cover. Then I'm going to go over one inch to three. 
and where it is underlined, that is where my, my page hinge is going to start, right? So this is all just going to be against the spine. Uh, we're going to attach a cute little extra part on here. That's why I made this an inch instead of three-fourths, because I am doing a three-fourths hinge, meaning I will have three-fourths of an inch between my pages on the hinge. <clears throat> It took me a long time to be able to sit down and do hinges, and I made myself this little guide. So if I'm going to do a half inch hinge, again, that's half inch between my pages. I go over two inches, I go over three fourths of an inch, then I scored a quarter, a quarter, a half, a half. Anyway, that's how I know how I need to do my measurements on here. It's just easier than sitting there and staring off into the emptiness trying to figure out math <clears throat> so here's our three now we're going to do our three and a quarter we're going to do three and a half i'm going to go ahead and erase that this is hinge a that way it won't be seen Three and a half, so now I'm going four. This is the part where our page will actually sit. Then I go over another half, so four and a half. So we've done two, three, three and a quarter, three and a half, four, four and a half, four and three fourths, five. That's the end of our first hinge. Okay, three inches was the first, five is the second. Now I'm gonna go over three fourths and this is the part between my page one and my page, my page one and two and page three and four. So go over to five and three fourths. Ooh. Find yourself. Five and three fourths, then we're going to go to six, six and a quarter, six and three fourths, seven and one fourth, seven and a half, seven and three fourths. Seven and three fourths, and then that's the end of our uh, second hinge. We're going to go over three fourths to eight and a half. Okay, so here is hinge number one. Hinge number one. Here is hinge number two. We've gone over our three fourths, so now we are going to go to eight. And three fourths. And then nine. And this is half of hinge three. Okay. So this will be where the cover is. This score line right here, which is three inches. This starts hinge number one, hinge number two, and this starts hinge number three. Now the next part that we're gonna do when it comes time to uh, make this. So this is our hinge. The next part is gonna glue onto that and that's how we will continue our hinges. All right, so hinge B. Six and three fourths across the top of your scoreboard. Remember, I put mine sideways. Eight and a quarter down the side. So my score lines go this way. <clears throat> so on here, we start at half an inch, three fourths, 
one inch. And that is the other part of hinge number three. Okay, so the next line we're gonna do is one and three fourths. And it is underlined, but that's how you know that's the part where we're gonna start our next page. Our next hinge, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> so one and three fourths. Okay, two, two and a quarter, uh, two and three fourths, two and three fourths, three, yes, sorry, three and a, three and one quarter, three and a half. Three and three fourths. All right, and that is hinge number four. We only need four because we're doing four pages. So now we're gonna make a one inch jump. So four and three fourths. Okay, this is the uh, score line where our, our spine meets our back cover. And so this is hinge B. All right. If you need to pause and look at that sheet and we do that, uh, make sure your score lines are where they need to be, by all means, go right ahead and do that. <clears throat> Just stick me on pause. <coughs> all right, so now we are going to put our hinges together. So we're gonna start folding on our score lines. <clears throat> so this is our front cover. Okay. It'll be in our book like this, front cover. Then we're gonna go over. And this is where our first page hinge is going to start. We're going to leave these humps here. We don't need to, we do not need to fold on score line one or two. All right. So we folded, we folded at two inches. We folded at three inches. And now we're going to fold at four inches. Quarter inch quarter inch, half inch. That's where we are folding. Okay, now see how I, this is how it's going to look in our book. Cover, spine, this is our hinge. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm moving away, aren't I? So I folded with, into the hump, into the hump, and now I'm folding away from the hump. See, these are my humps. All right, I'm gonna go past those two quarter inch score lines. And I'm gonna fold. And that is my first hinge. I know, you're thinking, wow, that's a big hinge. And it is, but <clears throat> we have these two score lines here and that is going to help the page be able to move give it more room to breathe if you will so hopefully it will lie flatter plus i use this score line so i know where to set my page instead of just guessing yeah that looks even so i will line up the edge of my page with that score line and that's where i will know to glue it down okay so we're going over the three fourths. Here we have our two score lines, our quarter inch. We want to fold at the first one. Go up to the half inch. 
Oh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. Go up to the half inch. Fold the opposite way that you did. And now go down past those two quarter inch. Okay, so here's our half. Here's our quarter. And here's our quarter. Fold at the second quarter. Then we go over. This is, goes along our spine. And there is hinge number three. All right? Clear as mud, yeah? I keep forgetting where the camera is. <clears throat> so here is hinge B. We have the half inch because this is going to get glued on here. All right, remember we had hinge three and hinge three. So I'm gonna fold so that those will be able to sit like this when we put them together. This is part of our spine. We're back to the beginning, those double quarters. Fold at the first. I guess we're folding up. Go past the double quarters to the half inch. Fold down. All right? Double quarters, half. Half, double quarters, fold up. And that is our fourth hinge. Now we have the back part of our spine, and this is what we put onto our back cover. So we fold that one up. And now we are ready to either tape or glue. I am gonna actually use tape on this because I have three fourths tape. Um, I will explain in another video. I don't mind using three-fourths tape, but the quarter-inch tape just does not seem to hold as well for me. It doesn't matter which brand I use. I've tried them all. They still come apart. Um, let me show you. This book I made oh, two years ago, right whenever I was starting. <clears throat> it's my Mary Poppins book. I'm slightly obsessed with all things Disney, but especially Peter Pan and Mary Poppins. And so I made this, love it, love it, love it. But I used the red score tape and my hinges are falling apart. I, it, it, I'm gonna have to start shoving glue down in there. So, and I believe this was a book from Cal's, no, I made a bunch of this book up. So, somewhere in here, I have pages that started, the paper actually started coming up off the page. And the only thing I can figure is it's that double-sided tape. Where, oh, here it is. So these were all pages. See my movable waterfall and my glue started coming off. This one went over here too. And I don't really like to give a book that doesn't work. And see this is coming off. This belongs back here. These belong on the inside. So thankfully I didn't give that book away. No, I have not taken the time to fix it. That would be lovely of me, wouldn't it? Um, but that is why I do not use the quarter inch tape anymore. <clears throat> I have not had this same trouble with the thicker tapes, thicker meaning width. So I have the three fourths. I just think there's more there for it to grip onto. So I have the three-fourths, I have the two-inch, and I have the four-inch. So what do I do with it? I am going to go ahead and use my three-fourths um, 
on here just because otherwise when I use my glue, I have to clip it and I just don't want to mess with that right now. So this is the front side of our hinges. Okay. I'm going to turn it over and this is where I originally numbered them. So here is hinge number one. Okay, here is, here is our spine. Here is our, our double quarters and our half inch. I am going to line my three-fourths tape up along this bottom score line, this first one here. If I have a little gap up here, it is going to be just fine. That's going to be inside the book and is not coming apart. So... Line it up. Okay. I don't need to do two. So this was the first side of my hinge. Second side, spine. Here's hinge number two. I'm going to line it up right along that bottom line again. But the whole glue and tape issue, that's why throughout the book you will see me using glue. All right, second hinge. There's my spine. Here's the beginning of, beginning of hinge number three. Still going to line my tape up right along there. Burnish those and make sure they are stuck down really well. And now hinge B. Okay. So here is the second part of hinge number three. Sorry, inside out. Second part of hinge number three. We're not putting tape on this part. We go to hinge number four and we're going to go ahead and put it along this bottom line. ready to put our hinges together. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this part off. Okay. Two quarters, half inch, half inch, two quarters. And all we got to do is just simply fold it up together. And then press, 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 press. Had a little bit left out and that's fine. Just flip it over. So that is hinge number four. Hinge number three. Second part of hinge number three. I'm going to go ahead and peel that off. There's my two quarters, my half inch. I'm going to meet it up with these two quarters and this half inch. Okay. Line up those tops. Actually, this is my spine side. Let's put spine spot spine side down. And let's line up our spines. That's gonna make more sense. Oh, let me have my fingers. <laughs> Goodness. All right. Press down. See where my two thumbs are down here? I'm gonna press these two points together so that I know that they are down. There we go. And there is hinge number three. Now see, they're off a little bit, but that is fine because this is all gonna be up inside the page. We are laying flat and that's what we care about, okay? 
So flip this over. This is the tape for hinge two. Go ahead and press that together. Okay, the tape for hinge number one. I got a little tape hanging off. All right, I'm gonna press those together. And there are my hinges, such as they are. And now we can figure out how big the spine is gonna be. And it looks like it's gonna be huge. But I did add that inch at the beginning and the end because we're gonna put those little bonus pieces there. So if I line this up, we have, wow, a four and one quarter. Four and a quarter inch spine. Okay, so I wanna make sure my hinges will go both ways. I wanna kind of bend. All right, so I just bent, there's those two quarters. This is that half inch. That's where I want my pages to realize they can bend like this and not have to stay standing straight up. Okay, so let's kind of give those just a little bit of a bend. You don't need to press it down with your scraper or anything. Just kind of say, yes, you can go this way and you can go that way. You can go all of the ways. It's almost like a Dr. Seuss thing. All right, so. There's our hinge. So now I need to go ahead and cut down that last piece of chipboard so that we can make our covers. <clears throat> so our book is not, yeah, nine and one fourths tall. Okay, I need to cut four and one quarter wide. This is, this is an old one. Um, it does have a rotating blade in here. I think I've changed it once in two years. I only use this for my chipboard. So it gets used for three things, to cut three pieces of chipboard every book. Um, my other two do have the rotating self-sharpening blades but I just don't, I just don't trust it. So I have to push down on this one, usually about three times, and I'm good to go. And this is an extra, so we'll put that with the scraps. All right, so now we have front, front cover, spine, back cover. I am going to need Well, that's not nice. Three. I'm going to use two 12 by 12s and I have this leftover piece uh, from whenever I just made those hinges. I'm gonna use that in the middle. Even though it has this, no, I'll cut that off. That little perforation. So, you are going to need enough paper that you will wrap your book with at least an inch and a half to the top, inch and a half to the bottom, and on the side. And I'll show you how I join them together. I do that a little different than most people as well. <clears throat> I can't remember who I would learn this from, but I like the way it lays. All right, so there's my perforation. I am just gonna nip that off. So 
so that I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So what I will end up doing is I will have my pages. This is my extra piece. I'm going to put my hinge on this middle piece. Okay. <clears throat> Oh no, I don't like that at all. Okay. I am confused. We're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna put my hinge right here in the middle of these two 12 by 12 pieces. It'd probably be easier if I would just go ahead and use. Oh, Lord. There. I bet three eight and a halfs will work. Yes, quite as they say in Australia. All right, so I'm going to center this top to bottom. All right? I am using, I know I just got through talking so horribly bad about tape. This is two inch tape. You can use glue. I am gonna use tape here. All right. <clears throat> so here's my spine. Here's my single sheet of eight and a half by 11. Yes, this is perforated. It's gonna get folded up, so it's not gonna matter. They're not gonna see it. Or more importantly, I'm not gonna see it. All right, let's go ahead and somewhat measure this. So that, we're gonna ballpark it. Looks about right. Since we're using the smaller paper, we're giving it an inch. So an inch from the bottom. That gives us approximately an inch at the top. But this shows me so I can have it as straight as possible. Okay, sticky side down. I'm going to line it up on here. Flatten it down. All right, so there's that. Now I have these handy dandy tools that I got. See, I thought about this before I did it. At Craft Shop by Seishi. Uh, she's at a Glenpool. I found this on Etsy. They are listed under binding tools. <clears throat> you can get them in different colors, but they go perfect right here down the middle. Now, I have had this for years. I don't know what she charges now. Um, I know she's got a lot more stuff. If you're into making boxes, she's got those little corners that will hold them together. We Are Memory Keepers also has those now. <clears throat> I know that they've been hard to find, so if you are in desperate need, I am going to be making a box book. Um, maybe not the next book, but the one after that. I've got one coming up in the next few months that I want to do. So, this is our nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. This will be our back cover. I can line it up here, and it leaves me the perfect width so that I don't have 
anything hitting each other. It helps my spine to not split or crack. So we will put tape right down one side. And I will end up putting that here. Then when we turn it over, I'll show you how I'm going to join the other piece. Okay, so I'm pressing down this T. Here's the top of my spine. Comes down, and it's going to line this up. And then I just got to press down. Okay. So now I have the perfect edge there. All right, so here's the outside. I am gonna line my tape right up next to that piece of, of craft paper that is covering my spine. Okay. I got torn. <coughs> Let it go. There it goes. All right. So I want to line this edge right up next to that. Okay. Make sure that is down. So just like I do my pockets, bottom corners, line it up along the sides. there. This part's going to be covered up with patterned paper anyway, but I don't have that small awkward little hump from whenever we, you know, we used to, or I used to. You'd put a thin thing of glue or tape here, and then you'd put this right on top of it, and we would end up with that ever so slight but, but there hump. I've started doing it this way, and I have had no troubles. So, now we got to put our tape down. Yes, the big four inch tape. And this is great advertising, I realize, for scrapbook.com. But they have no idea. So, I paid for that. I am going to put some three-fourths down there. My dog's getting angry. There's, there's dogs across the cove. <laughs> and she can hear them barking. It is nice enough here even though it is January 1st, that we have some windows open. Peel those off. Smooth that down. Now, had I been smart, I would have put all that on there before I did this. We'll do that on the next side. All right, so there is one side. Now we just need to do this side. So I'm going to get, there it is, my T. Stick it right there. This is going to be the one that goes on this side. Go ahead. Put down my tape. I'll let go. If you're using glue, you may just want to do the small portion right here that you're going to be putting 
the other cover on. Okay, there's that one. And I'm gonna fill in that little gap with my three fourths. Oh, she's mad. She says I was sleeping. Sleeping, damn it. All right. So there's my tea. side. I'm going to line it up. Press down. I'm going to go shut that window in a minute. There, that went a little bit better, didn't it? All right. So now I'm just going to put that last piece of paper on. Line up this corner with this corner. Press in along the seam. There we go. Ta-da! So, now we're going to use the other handy-dandy tool that came in the kit. This has the perfect corner. It goes right here and shows me where I need to nip this off. So that is where I will cut to cut in my corners. Oh, now she's gotten down off the sofa. Now she means business. Oof. Oh, she's grumbly. Missy, you going to make it? You gonna be all right? <laughs> nope. All right, so I've got my line there. I'm gonna cut. The other thing, that is about a one eighth space. If you wanted to measure out, eyeball it. <clears throat> going to fold in my sides so I'm going to go ahead and kind of pre-fold it what is that? Yep. slap down some tape spank my dog. I'm kidding. I wouldn't spank her. But we are going to have a conversation about remaining calm. There. So then we'll fold it over. Let it go. Oh, for the love. There we go. <laughs> oh, my gravy. All right. And then fold that over. Got a little bit of sticky here. That'll be for whenever I fold this side over. <clears throat> so, along the bottom of the actual cover. Missy Lou. She does not care. What are you doing? Why are you losing your brain? Come here. No, nope, I'm not going over there. 
Maybe in a minute. Oh, she's <coughs> angry. Uh-uh, no ma'am, out of here. Sorry. Again, I don't know how to edit or else I would. I will learn, but it didn't happen fast enough. All right. Get my bend. Fold over. I start in the middle and work my way. I do rub up while I'm doing it because that makes sure that I'm not getting any bubbles in there. Okay. Now we got to pinch in the corners. And this is what I never understood when other people were doing it. I take my smallest scraper. Okay. I'm going to line it up with this cut that I just made right there at the point. And then I'm going to push down. Okay. That makes it even this way. That is the best way I have figured. So I'm gonna do the same over here. Here's, here's where I cut, here's my point. I just kinda push in and roll. Push in and roll. So that's why you want about an eighth inch sticking out from your point of your cover to where you slice off that corner. And here is the second reason why I like having this paper that is split. Hang on. I am gonna do this one at an angle. Yeah. Because, ooh, that's a good angle. I don't have to try to fold this all in one go because inevitably I get bubbles. I get humps and I don't like that. I just don't like that. So I'm going to line my tapes up, fold it in three parts. That angle will work right here. Oh, this one came on this part, sorry. This can go all the way. These parts I do in, in sections. Again, I know, clear as mud. I hope watching helps. I will get better eventually. Pre-fold, pre-fold, okay. Oh, they must have stopped. The princess is happy again. Are you happy now? Yeah. She has a little bed in my craft room that's right next to my desk. I call it her princess bed. It's up on a stool and she can look out the window, but that window is not open. So, unless Mr. Kitty Kitty walks by, or her friend Dexter who lives next door, she should remain calm. All right, I'm going to start with my middle. Push it over, start in the middle, and then push up. Okay, Let's start in the middle, push up. Look at that. Damn near perfect corner. Push up. One more side.
I'm using that angle that I've already put on my tape. So when I do this side, it will give me the angle that I can use over here. We're going to start in the middle. Oh, come on. There we go. Sorry, I'm quiet. I'm usually watching, I don't know, murder shows or true crime. All right, press up in the middle. So I start in the middle and then go out. Again over here, start in the middle, press up. Start in the middle. Press up. And by golly, we have made a book. This is the part I can never seem to get people to understand that I have made. No, I literally made the book. And they're like, okay, but where did you get like the book? And I said, no, I, I made the book. I made it. I made it. I don't know. I just feel very powerful saying I made the book. All right, this is where we're going to put our hinge on. It's going to fit right in here. What? Here's my Missy. This here's a crazy dog. Is you a crazy dog? All right, go get back on your princess bed. I'm almost done. So we are going to put this on here. And as you see, our hinges come just slightly into that gap that we made and that's what we want because it gives us plenty of room when it's time to bend our book okay so go ahead give her a good bend when I do I like to make sure her pages her covers are lining up train that bend to do that And we've got plenty of room, so I am able to bend my cover all the way over like this. My body can't do that, but I can train this paper to do it, by God. There we go. Heck of a deal. <clears throat> so here's where I need to decide what's the front and what's the back. I usually look and see which one looks prettier. This is going to be my front. This is going to be my back. My top, my bottom, my top, my bottom. I do that because I have truly attached things upside down before. Upside down. So, I mark it now. There we go. Alright. <clears throat> I am going to glue this part down. Because I do not trust the tape that much. So, I'm going to slather this up in glue and slap it down on here. But first, I wanna figure out where this is even. And by to do that, I am gonna find the center of my spine. All right. Oh goodness, that's not it. Four and a half, nope. Four and five eighths, four and five eighths. So four and five eighths up from the bottom if you're using just a regular ruler. 
measuring stick, if you will. I'm going to mark it on both sides. Four and five eighths. Okay, so that's the center of those. Now I'm going to find the center of my hinge because it was eight. Oh goodness, it was eight and a quarter. So it should be four and one eighths. Yep. So you want to come up four and one eighths, and that will be your center. Four and one eighths. Come on. Move. There we go. Four and one eighths. So now whenever I line it up, I will know that my pages will be even. All right. Where is the blue? <clears throat> okay. All right. Oh, come on. All right, so there's my half mark, and there's my half mark. So that's gonna go right there. Actually, it needs to come to the middle of that. There we go. And this side. We are good. All right, and then just press down. Press, 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 press. Even if you're using tape, press, press, press. We want all the parts to get together and become one. Oh. just a little bit on me. Where's my scraper? But I got some glue coming out down here. That makes me happy. I'm still mark on mark. Mark on mark, so I should be good. All right, now I can go ahead and glue this side down <coughs> because we have our, our score line where the spine meets the cover. We should be good. And have plenty of give so it will not split I'm gonna go ahead and put some right down the middle of that open spot on my spine there we go. And press down. I like it when the glue comes out because that means it's really in there. All right, pushing down there. I'm gonna clean up my glue real quick. Now 
when I open it. I had that pressed down, not to the point of cutting my paper, but that is gonna help us have that room so that it does not split when we open it. Oh, that's nice. There, see? No splitting. Oh, there's your daddy. Then we're gonna do that on the other side and I will see you in the next video for making the pages.